Springtime on the mountain. Still a couple weeks away, according to the calendar. But sunshine and mild temps says our fifth and final winter up here is coming to an end. Rain is on the way, so the kids take advantage of what may be their last opportunity to play in the snow. Well, maybe not just the kids. The quickest way to make the snow go away is to fix a snowmobile. <laughs> Well, we have lost a lot of snow overnight, didn't we? I haven't seen this much bare ground in a long time. But the temperatures have dropped back down. It's below freezing, cold and blustery, and all the slushy snow has turned to ice. I and mean, it's slick out here. I've got my micro spikes on. You can see it's kind of foolish to try and walk without them. The whole road looks like that. Yeah, pretty crazy. Our access up and down the mountain is kind of a joke right now. My uh, green Jeep has got an issue. I think it needs a master cylinder or something, so I have no brakes. Um, so I don't have that on chains. That's usually what we use, and the tracks are no good on the ice. So actually, we've just been walking in and out. It's not too bad. It's really a good way, when you think about it, a good way to end our fifth and final winter up here. Yeah. So anyway, starting to see just a little bit of bare ground in the garden area. And uh, I'm kind of messing around in the greenhouse a little bit this morning. I'm going to strawberry plants are uh, poking through. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. It's so much nicer in here. <laughs> you can hear that wind out there. Yeah, man. So it's getting to be about that time, folks. I think probably in about 10 days or so, we'll start filling these trays and starting our seeds for this year's garden. Although a lot of things are up in the air. I don't know how this year is going to unfold. We will plant some things here and probably a few raised beds over on the other property. But I don't know if we'll be here at harvest time. I don't know how the year is going to unfold. Um, before I can sell the camp, I have to get a, a surveyor involved to chunk off the five acres. So I don't really know, but it doesn't matter. We have a lot of options, and I like that. I like to have a lot of options. We're not stuck to do one thing. We don't have to do one particular thing, and that's the way I've always lived my life, and it works well for me. So we have a lot of options. I don't think we're going to start building the new cabin this year, although I do plan to at least have the foundation put in. I'm going to do a, a walkout basement on part of that and get that capped off and heated and waterproof. I'd like to get that done this year, but what we're going to do, as soon as we can get up and down the mountain in a decent manner, we're going to get back to work on that project of building the garage that I showed you there back in December, January. Um, we want to finish that project, so we're really anxious to get back to it. But for right now, okay, we're kind of stuck up here uh, traveling in and out on foot, so we're not going to walk down the mountain, work all day, and then walk back up after a long, hard day. So, um, kind of wrapping up things here, getting the greenhouse ready to go. I've got all these seeds that I'm going through here. Uh, I know that Lori wants to plant lots of flowers, get a lot of flowers started here that she will plant on the other property. And I wanted to show you something. Remember back when we lived at the New York homestead, I had showed you the gardens that we grew there. We had some awesome gardens there, and I was showing you that we grew it all with outdated seeds. I talked about how we got a big box of seed for free at one of the 
home shows from a, you know, a seed outlet, and they were updated. So these are still some of those seeds, like here, sell by December 2012. Okay, they expired in 2012. And this is 10 years later, and I'm still going to plant some of these. And I planted a lot of these last year and had really good success. Not 100% success, but they're free seeds, and it doesn't matter. I've always had really good luck with this NK brand. Uh, and probably the reason why these are still good is because they're in foil packs. And I doubt that they come that way because, you know, sign of the times, everything gets cheaper. You know how it is. But we're going to plant these. Now, I've talked to you about the floating seed trays that we use. That's the beauty of these. It's really effortless to plant all these seeds. I can put a whole bunch in here, and I'm not dicking around by planting in cups and stuff. I plant a whole bunch in here, and then if some don't, some don't come up, I don't care. I've lost nothing, and the ones that do come up, I take out, I transplant them in cups, and then they go from here to the garden. But you've seen how we do that. The scraps of bubble foil, it's everywhere. But I am going to Home Depot this week, and I'm going to get bubble foil. I'm getting several rolls for the garage project. <laughs> bubble foil. Yeah, man. Hey, folks. I was wondering if some of you could help me identify something that I found out in the woods a while ago. I'm always kicking around out in the woods, as you know and I find cool stuff. Sometimes I don't know what it is, like this thing here, okay? It's heavy steel or iron, feels like cast iron. Uh, it's about six inch diameter. And this makes me think that teeth from a sprocket went into here to turn it. And I'm kind of wondering if something came off of here and it was a belt for like a steam-powered sawmill or something like that. That's where my brain goes when I see this. That there was a belt on something here, a flat belt, like on the Walton's old sawmill in the show there. Belt-driven sawmill. And I'm kind of wondering if there was teeth from a sprocket that went in here, but I don't know. So if any of you know what this could be, share your thoughts. Some I think it's pretty cool. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I'll put it to use someday. Just an old relic I found out in the woods. In fact, I'll tell you uh, kind of a cool find um, that I, something that I found unexpectedly many years ago. I was probably in my late 20s. I was hunting out here and there was an old stump all covered with moss and I was just flattening off the top with my boot because I wanted to sit on it and my foot hit something hard in the stump and it was an old axe head that has been there like forever and I would have never found it if I didn't want a place to sit and I just happened to be kicking that stump and inside it was that old axe head obviously from a logger way way back in the day that sunk his axe in that stump and then the handle rotted off and it was there till I came along. I have that axe head somewhere it's probably at the New York cabin and someday I do intend to restore it and make a handle for it and just have another little treasure from back in the day. So anyway, if you know what this is or could be, share your thoughts. I'm dying to know. You know, folks, being our last winter here, I have just taken the time to enjoy it, taking it 
low and slow, been in hibernation mode, and it's been great. I've spent quite a bit of time in my workshop just puttering on things, and I, I love doing that. Um, I've stepped back from YouTube a bit, gave myself some me time, you know, less pressure, and it's done me a world of good. So uh, that's the way I'm going to continue. You know, there might be a few weeks go by where I don't make a video. Um, that's just the way it is. YouTube's not my life. Uh, nobody knows how much life they have left. And I had a rude awakening um, on that subject just recently where we lost a very dear friend. Um, yeah, so at, whenever that happens, it makes me do a little bit more soul searching and it's more of a wake up call about how fragile life is and makes me think about life and what is really important and quality of life is what's important so by taking that step back like I had said that I was going to do it's given me more time and has given me more peace of mind and it's been great it's been great so I've been down here in the shop put it on little projects, uh, rekindled my fascination with um, old cast iron cookware. Uh, in the past I've shared videos with you about restoring cast iron and how I have a fascination for these old waffle irons. Well I kind of got away from that for a while <clears throat> but I just restored an old iron, a 1925 waffle iron and gave it to my friend for his birthday and that got me back to making waffles again with my old ironware and I forgot how great it is and one thing that I love to do is make French toast but put them in the iron and they are awesome this waffle iron has got such a good seasoning to it now it's just awesome this is the first waffle iron I ever got and took it right down to bare metal and started seasoning it and it's just been such a good performer and look at that, that popped right out of there oh, it's wonderful and that's the way to have French toast oh, yeah. oh, this is so awesome oh, they look perfect non-stick you can hear the crispiness oh. of them too. <laughs> gonna be great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now those were yummy. Let me tell you what. Make them with cinnamon raisin bread, and oh my goodness, you're gonna have to go for a walk to burn off some of those calories. Yeah. So a while ago, I got this gem right here. I got it at the dump. This is a 1908 Griswold, but it's a number nine. I have never seen a number nine. All the ironware, uh, the waffle irons that I've restored were number eights and smaller. But this is a gem and it's in really good shape. I'm just going to restore it and I will never part with this baby. That makes a big waffle. <laughs> and another thing, you know, I, I, I like to make bird houses and bird feeders. I've been puttering with that. I'll be sharing some of that with you. I've got this curl of bark off of a piece of firewood off a of yellow birch, and I'm going to make a birdhouse out of this. That's my intention anyway. And i got another project going on here. This is the plexiglass windshield off of my old Ranger. My newer Ranger has a tempered glass windshield. Uh, this windshield here was really scratched. The sun was hitting it. You could not see through it. I was going to attempt at buffing it out. I know that sometimes you can buff out the scratches. This has been off of my machine for I don't know, seven years, maybe longer, um, and it's really fogged now. So I think buffing it is going to be a waste of time. So anyway, 
Before I order a new one, which they're over 300 bucks, I decided I would mark out two spots. I left some in the center, and I don't know, about seven inches or whatever on each end, some on the top and the bottom. I'm going to cut out these spots, and then I'm going to place a clear piece of plexiglass over this and see how that works. I have the plexiglass, and I put it on. If it doesn't work, so what? Right? Nothing ventured, nothing gained, and if it doesn't work, nothing lost. And then I'll proceed with buying a new one. But I'm going to give it a go, and I'll let you know. <laughs> Well, one more thing before I close this video. This is something I've wanted to share with you for quite some time. Over the years, I've gotten quite a few interesting things sent up from my subscribers. People would often send different beers that they wanted me to try, or coffee, or they send a knife, or a cool flashlight, or stuff like that. Well, I got this beaver in the mail. And I'll show you in closer detail in a minute. This was sent by one of my subscribers because I've shared a lot of footage of beavers with you throughout the years. And it started when we were living at the New York homestead. We had the beaver pond out in front of the cabin there. And I would often go out there with my tripod and get some pretty cool footage of the beavers. And then we moved to the mountain here, and I've gone off into the woods and set up trail cams and got some really cool footage of beavers building lodges and maintaining dams. And then the other winter out here, I shared some footage of that beaver, how he was trying to set up shop in the mountain stream. That was cool footage. So a while ago, I got this package in the mail. And this beaver right here, believe it or not, is made out of paper mache. Now, I can't say that except for this, I have ever seen anything made out of paper mache that I would ever care to look at. <laughs> but this thing is incredible. Um, the, the detail in this beaver is amazing. Now, I've seen a lot of taxidermy that looked like garbage, that wasn't realistic. The feet were dried up and looked like dried up old feet. Uh, they, they just did not look good. Um, this thing is more realistic in detail than a lot of taxidermy I have ever seen, and it's made out of paper mache. I gotta show you in close detail. This thing is crazy. Okay, for one thing, look at the fur diagram here, the detail in the fur, all right? Now, what really blows my mind is the feet. Look at the feet. They are realistic, real real realistic look at the feet okay just amazing got the little mouth there uh-huh i mean all right look at this thing look at the tail all right it doesn't just have some waffle pattern stamped into it it looks like a beaver tail the ridge in the top it feels like a beaver tail this is one of the coolest presents I have ever gotten. And I have treasure in it. There's Tilly. She's like, where's that? Where's that, Dad? <laughs> so it is just the coolest thing. And I've been wanting to share this with you for quite some time. So isn't that something? Tilly thinks so. She thinks so. What is that? What is that, Chelsea? What is that? Hey. <laughs> Isn't that cool? It's just amazing. Like I said, more realistic than some of the taxidermy I have seen. 
So I want to thank you, Eileen, for sending this up. It's the coolest thing. We show it to all of our guests here at the cabin. And I'm going to treasure it and keep it in a safe place in the new cabin. Yeah. So that is it for now, folks. I will probably have a video for you next week. And if not, it'll be the week after because I'm enjoying my me time. But like I said, as soon as we can get up and down the road in a decent fashion, we're going to get back to work on the project over there and have a lot of footage to share with you. So that's it for now. All the best to you. And God bless. Frank and the boss out of walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss.